Hey folks, Quillotine here, and today I've got some special gameplay footage from XCOM 2. XCOM 2 is a game that is published by 2K Games, developed by Fraxis, and is going to be released in February of 2016. But just last week, about three months before the release of the game, 2K invited me and a few other people to go to their offices in California to play the game ourselves, hands-on. What you're seeing on the screen is me playing the game. The pacing will be a little bit slower because I'm also talking with some of the other developers and things like that around as I play that, but it'll give me plenty of time to explain what's going on. It's worth noting what we were able to do when we got there. We were able to play through the initial tutorial mission, followed by the second mission, the mission immediately after the tutorial. Um, but we weren't recording those. We were able to then um, load up a save, and then we're going to be playing two missions. A Guerrilla Ops mission, which you're going to see in this video, and a Black Sight mission, which you're going to see in the next video immediately after this one. There are certain things we weren't able to show you. You'll see on the screen, particularly as I'm going around our headquarter building here or headquarters ship, I should say, um, I'm not going to be able to open the research lab for you. So unfortunately, um, could not show you that in, in this video, but uh, they've, they've got some surprises there that they're, they're still waiting to reveal and they don't want to spoil too much right now. So that's the only thing. But other than that, pretty much free to roam around this entire vessel. So for those of you who don't know the story of XCOM 2, it's this. In XCOM 1, well, and all the previous XCOMs, right? Aliens invade the Earth, and the XCOM group, the XCOM organization, is Earth's first and last line of defense against the alien invaders. And in, in, in XCOM, you normally, you know, go and defeat the alien invasion, do all this. Well, in XCOM 2, they've decided to um, imagine a world, it's not a direct sequel, because they imagine a world in which the XCOM group failed, that the aliens succeeded in their invasion of the Earth, and in fact, tricked the people of Earth into thinking that they were benevolent people here to contribute and help uh, the, the Earthlings with, you know, technology and, and medicine and research and all those sorts of good things, you know, and world peace, world unification. Um, but there are still some people who know that the aliens are actually have got some more nefarious plans in mind. And the XCOM organization still exists, but now instead of being um, funded by world governments, you are an underground organization of rebels and freedom fighters that are on the run. And in particular, your base is actually um, a, an alien ship that has been stolen and repurposed and converted. And instead of being static in a single location, um, you know, underwater or wherever like classic XCOM bases are, this one moves around the map. So you've got a very different sort of feel to things right away, but it also affects a lot of your mission planning. It takes time to travel around, do those sorts of things, and the aliens this time around are actually quite a bit more dynamic in what they do. They do not sit idle while you do things. They actually have their own missions that they are trying to execute, including missions to track you down and attack you. And by performing certain missions, uh, like these guerrilla ops, for example, you can help foil some of the aliens' plans, and some of them you won't be able to, to, take, to, uh, to foil all of them. Some of them will do things like uh, give them more powerful units in the future, for example, right? They'll be able to develop new armor and equipment unless you go and counter them. So you're really gonna have to start to pick and choose exactly what you're gonna deal with here. On the screen, you can see the character customization is extremely rich. There's a lot of options this time around for you to customize your squad members to look pretty much whatever way you would like. Uh, here, I'm trying to imagine myself uh, if I were a rough and tumble kind of soldier, how would I look? And this is the way that I'm sort of picturing it. And of course, I want my character to be easily spotted on the battlefield so that I can keep track of him and camouflage be damned I'm gonna make sure to go with bright bright colors That's why when we're playing a mission I'll know exactly which person is me, but you can see there's a lot of options for color there There's even options for um, for the voices and as with previous versions there are voice options for every um, For every nation that your XCOM members uh, may come from I don't remember what I end up picking here, I have to watch, looks like I went with uh, one of the English voices there so I could understand myself. You've got that, but you've also got personality that you can put in there. They've got certain attitudes that you can pick and choose. And some of the things only become available as people get more experience points. For example, the corporal level here, I wasn't able to assign myself a nickname, which is too bad because I really just want to be uh, Quill18, but I'm gonna have to sell, settle for Inquile Marquez over here. Oh, there we go, and I haven't picked the voice yet, so that's gonna happen. Anyway, so you still have your, your 
big international group of people, you are still going to be doing missions in a sort of turn-based kind of system. There are a couple of gameplay changes in the actual combat that we're going to talk about when we get there, but in particular the new concealment system is a really interesting new mechanic, and I really think it actually solves a lot of issues I always kind of had with XCOM, right? The idea that the second you spot the alien on the map, they instantly know where you are, uh, you know, cover be damned, and they can instantly take a turn. Well, now, the aliens really do have to actually spot you before you can resp they can respond, and in particular, when you start the mission, you start in, in a, a concealment mode, because the aliens literally have no idea that you're there at all, and um, then you have a lot more freedom to sort of stealth around and to set things up, which is great. And this ties into the Ranger class here. This character here that I'm building is a new class that is in XCOM 2 called the Ranger. They are mostly short-range fighters. They come by default equipped with a shotgun, but also a, a melee weapon, a sword that they can use to, uh, to fight people in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and it's devastatingly effective. Um, as is classic in, in, you know, XCOM here, when your characters level up, you do get to choose traits, and there tends to be two different, uh, I guess, paths that you can go down. And with the Ranger, there's one path that is considerably more stealthy, and one path that gives you considerably more potency in your melee attacks. And in these videos, I go down the one that gives me more melee attack potential. In particular, one of the cool things with the melee attacks, you can actually do a full charge. Like, you can double move and still do your melee attack, which means you have tremendous mobility and range, basically, to go and kill people with your sword. And I think I even took a trait that gave me, I think, plus three movement in here. You guys will have to... to Keep your eyes open for that. But plus three movement, so I could move even faster, even further, with a double move. Here we can see a couple of things here. The phantom trait is really interesting. This is one of the abilities that uh, you, I could have taken here. While the squad is revealed, this soldier remains concealed. Is the other one I could have taken. Instead, I went for just more damage. But that's really cool because concealment breaks your whole squad, right? As soon as one of your squad members gets spotted, concealment ends. There's still the ability to sort of hide from direct visual contact, but you're out of the, the sort of concealment mode that lets you do like real hardcore ambushes. However, the ranger can take that trait where until he specifically gets spotted, um, he will still be under concealment, which means for the entire duration of the mission, you can use your soldier as an advanced spotter and at, to, to know where the aliens are and plan your attacks accordingly. I, I suspect that, you know, if he actually fires a shot or, or gets into melee or, of course, gets too close, then that will break his own personal concealment as well. Although I think there's some upgrades later on that may let you become reconcealed uh, given the correct circumstances. And anyway, I think anyone who's ever played XCOM would know the value of being able to spot exactly where the aliens are. In particular, some of them move around as well. They have little patrol routes and things. Um, and so you can track that and try to lure people into an ambush where you get to set the rules about how to start things off. Uh, the support specialist over here is kind of interesting. They've got this um, gremlin little robot drone that follows them around. It's called a gremlin. And one of the big um, upgrades that you can do for your character... Oh, by the way, weapon upgrades over here. That's another one worth talking about. Um, very cool. The uh, This weapon here is one slot for upgrades. I believe some of the weapons later on will have multiple upgrade slots. It's probably something that you can research and unlock. And there's a variety of uh, little ones. In particular, uh, it was recommended to me that we may want to uh, upgrade this minigun to have a larger ammo capacity because you do go through it quite quickly. There's also the personal combat sims, which are... Um, I, I, I'm not sure exactly how they're flavored, if they're supposed to be um, a stimulant or a, a computer chip or DNA modification. Uh, neural enhancement, it says. There it is. So there's some sort of chip, I guess, that you're putting into your brain. Fair enough. We're slightly into the future. Um, and your characters start off, again, with like one slot for that, and you can, um, you can put it in. Once you put a uh, personal combat sim inside the slot, you can't then remove it and use it somewhere else, but you can always replace it with another one. The weapon mods are exactly the same way, so you don't want to be replacing them willy-nilly, because you're going to consume them, but you're not locked in either, which is nice. Oh, here you can see I give my character, that's how I get my plus two movement speed on my ranger. Uh, because, I mean, just with the shotgun, it's lower. Um, oh, this is great. 5% instant kill chance on the, uh, the repeater there. Um, even the shotgun's relatively short range, so it makes sense to get more mobility there, but again, I want to get myself in a position where I can sword people pretty aggressively. Uh, and yeah, this gremlin here that I was talking about is pretty interesting. It's got a few different options right out of the box. Um, all the characters have, um, can now hack things. There's a sort of hacking ability for certain doors and computers and that, which sort of existed conceptually 
in the the previous XCOM release, but now it's made a bit more explicit. There's a bit of a mechanic, there's some stats that come into play, and a few more options. Well, in particular, the Gremlin can be used to hack things remotely. And once you figure that out, holy cow, that is really, really exceptionally awesome and terribly, terribly useful. Really, really enjoy that. We pop down to engineering. Uh, I think I take a quick glance at some of the things like building items, some of the options over here. Uh, for example, I only have the one med kit. I don't remember if I build another one here. I may. I haven't unlocked, in this save that we have, we haven't unlocked any new weapons or armor or anything of that sort though. So there's, again, we're three months away from release and they were very careful to only show us a couple of very early missions. So a lot of the, the functions, the tools, what kind, you know, are there more gene modifications? Do you get mech suits again? That we weren't able to, to see or play with here. Um, we do have the um, the Gorilla Tactics School where we can unlock uh, different things. For example, the plus one squad size was pretty good. Wetworks would normally be something I really like, but in this case, because I knew I only had a couple of missions, 25% more XP wasn't, didn't seem that important. However, the plus three movement while still under concealment sounded like a great thing. And in particular, Again, that stacks nicely with the Ranger stuff. Um, I can see a lot of interesting things there. I don't remember, I think I do, maybe not in this video, I think it'll be at the end of the next video. I think I go and highlight all of the possible um, unit upgrades, right, for your promotions that I had access to, so you can see all the options. Uh, but the sniper this time around is really interesting because they've got a bit of a split in what they can do um, in much more of a notable way than I think the previous iteration of XCOM. Oh, here you can see these are the dark events. These are things aliens are planning. You can see exactly how much time things are, are taking, what they're preparing. We could spend intel to reveal more events as well. And then we can decide what we may want to counter with. We're going to start by playing a guerrilla ops mission here. Um, and right down there, we're going to be doing the Indian one. But there's a lot of stuff already on the map, a lot of options. There is a black market that we could go to, which might be a thing. So yeah, we're going to move to the new India guerrilla ops site. But you can see there's another one over here. So this would help stomp uh, the resistance informant event. And this one will stomp the... Advent Alloy pending event, plus gives me a reward in any case of giving me an extra engineer as well. So we're going to pop down there. Uh, oh yes, the sniper. So the sniper really focuses on, on the two branches, one being like, so the more conventionally sort of sniper thing, you know, long range accuracy. But there's another branch that focuses very, very, very heavily on pistol work. And some of the developers told me, like, a lot of people will naturally gravitate towards the sniping thing, but the pistol stuff is actually really strong. And in fact, the sniper we're going to be bringing with us has, I believe, all the cleaner here, Sergeant Bell, the cleaner, the sharpshooter, has already been upgraded down the, um, down the pistol route. And I gotta say, I'm pretty sold on it. I don't remember if it's this mission or the next mission that you're really going to see it pay off, but, um... Her ability. First of all, a lot of people don't have a secondary weapon. The Ranger has his sword, and the Sharpshooter has a pistol, but I think the others don't. In fact, I think it's in this mission that I kind of get screwed on that. I assume one of my normal, um, my normal people who have an assault rifle, but they're, you know, they're out of ammo. I still move them in to engage an enemy, thinking I can switch to the pistol for the shot at like point blank range, and I get there and I realize. Oh my god, I don't have a pistol anymore. So a few little things here catch me up because I, I wasn't uh, expecting things to be slightly different. But, so the pistol work, it, with the sharpshooter, they have an ability to fire the pistol once without using any action points. Which is amazing. And of course the pistol normal shot only takes one action point as well. So now all of a sudden you're talking about being able to fire a couple times in a round. You can move, fire, fire with the pistol. Which is pretty, pretty attractive. And there's a few other things that start to, um, to pile in there to make a pistol oriented sharpshooter. Very, very, very interesting. Alright, so here we've got the Black Ops site. Of course, as you know, the uh, one of the, well, you may not know, one of the big things with XCOM 2 is that the levels are going to be procedurally generated this time. Basically, each level as a whole is sort of, you can imagine it as like a series of, I don't know, Lego blocks or something like that, where they're putting in certain pre-made blocks, but in randomized orientations and positions so that there's going to be a lot more replay value this time because you're not going to get used to seeing the same, you know, 15 maps over and over and over. And not only is the layout going to be randomly generated, or procedurally generated, but other weather and environmental effects will come into play there that should shake it up a bit more. Now, if you watch anyone else's gameplay of these XCOM 2 missions, uh, the, all the levels should be identical because we all started from the same save, and of course they're trying to get things to be pretty consistent. So, um, again, the, the gameplay here will be a little bit slow, 
because again I'm you know trying to take note of all the mouse overs and things like that look at the top of the screen you can that icon there with the hoods indicates that we are currently in concealment and when we move close enough to be able to see an alien or in this case a sensor tower oh, you'll see it in a moment there will be a series of red squares on the ground I think they might be red with little eye symbols in them we'll see in a second what it, they look like but that indicates a position where if I were to go there I would be revealed so what I'm doing here is I, I scouted a couple of units ahead to see if they might spot an alien and then I moved that's myself you can tell because of my brilliant blue armor over here and of course I have slightly more movement as well I was I was like okay now I know there's not like an alien right here on the other side of this wall so it's gonna be safe for me to move forward you could blindly move forward very far and find yourself within vision range of an alien I think just at the top of the screen you're gonna be able to start seeing some red squares there because there's a sensor tower there we go there's a sensor tower right there and that, if I stepped into any of those squares, would break concealment. So that's really important to know. As long, and this is only during the concealment phase that you get these uh, these red squares, by the way. Uh, after concealment has been broken, because you either got spotted or you initiated combat, that sort of red square mechanic goes away. But still, aliens don't just automatically know where you are um, in a way that feels a lot better. They'll like you'll actually see them on the screen and they won't necessarily always go for you, um, even if you're not in proper concealment. So here, oh, I'm sending my little gremlin drone over here to hack this tower. Now, whether you're hacking it with the drone or with the person is exactly the same. So we can see here, there's, um, you can choose a hack reward, and some of them are more difficult than others, and based on your tech score versus the target tech score, you'll get a certain percentage of success um, on the meter. And if you get past a certain line, then you know you get that reward. Some of these hacks have 100% chance of success for something, and then a small chance of success for something else. That, that stack, like some of the things will always unlock a door, but if you do it really well, then the people on the other side of the door will get you know a penalty because they were so surprised by it or, or something of that nature. And I think that's gonna be very interesting. Um, in particular, the remote drones really add a lot of value to the specialist. Okay, so here we've got our... What do they call them? I don't remember. They had they had a name and I can't remember. The Snake Man over here. Um, that were apparently, based on the, the voiceover that you're probably hearing right now. I have it muted on my end. I should probably shut up, but, you know, I can't hear it while I'm doing my own voiceover. Uh, apparently, that's what the Thin Men really, really look like, which is really interesting. Also, one of the things is you're actually not fighting against aliens that often per se in this game a lot of the people you're fighting against are basically the aliens human foot troopers uh, although they're not necessarily entirely human either uh, but it does give you a little bit more diversity it's basically like fighting some of the um, in the you know the previous version of the XCOMs just those those other dudes right the other people but this is a, uh, it's a bit of a mixed bag over here so you can see I'm scooching up a bit more. I don't have to worry about the sensor tower spotting us, but we do have to worry about these guys. So you can see here, we've got a few people. Tygen is giving us a little bit of a voiceover. And I'm just trying to set up here. Now, here's one of the things. You're, you're seeing me um, hesitate with some of these movements that are going through these, these red force field looking things. I don't know if the force field, when I'm playing this, sets off any alarms or does anything like that. Apparently breaking windows, may break your concealment. So I wasn't sure if passing through those red bars might do it. So I was hesitating. I'm like, okay, I've got enough people in position right now. Let's see what happens. And in fact, it does not break concealment. So I was like, okay, okay, okay. But that's why I was hesitating with some of those moves at first. So I'm trying to get people into position. What's interesting in concealment mode, if you can put everyone in overwatch, and then when, you know, say like the last person that turn gets in position and actually fires, you'll fire um, you'll, you'll hit or miss or whatever, then the aliens will sort of respond and, and try to move into the cover, but that means that everyone who's in Overwatch will be able to take a shot, so that's the sweet spot. Oh, I think that's what I set up here with my with my sniper. It's like, okay, everyone's in concealment and ready to go. Can we take a shot, or do I wait one more turn? I don't remember exactly the order we've got. Now, I think that was my plan here, and we should be able to see that. You can see my pistol. I can Overwatch with my sniper rifle or my pistol. In this case, yeah, I just want to fire this. We're going to fire at that Viper. Or maybe the Stun Lancer. The Viper, we can't one-shot. But I think I assume here that the Viper is probably a little bit more dangerous. So we did, looks like, four damage from over here against the Viper, which is definitely not enough to kill it. But now, so we have been revealed. Concealment has been broken. And now the aliens will try to move for cover. But I have them covered with a bunch of people set to Overwatch. And we miss. And we hit. Oh, hit for six damage. Excellent kill there. Wonderful. And we still have some Overwatch left over. So we've really organized something good 
here. We did miss here with the shotgun, which is too bad, but this was pretty long range. I don't know the uh, the, the statistics here of the, uh, the shotgun, but I assume it's considerably less accurate at long range over here. And here we can see an enemy taking advantage of the ability to do a charge melee attack. Basically, the enemy equivalent of the ranger. Luckily, he missed, because that would have been really devastating. In fact, that could have very easily been a one-shot there. I did not expect him to be able to close so quickly. Uh, really caught me off guard. There's going to be a couple of those things, right? Because, again, while we did play the tutorial mission, there weren't a whole lot of uh, mechanics being demonstrated there. So, um, just like regular XCOM, the first time you meet a new alien, usually they're going to do something you simply did not expect and weren't able to... Uh, um, uh, defend yourself properly. Here you can see we've got some aliens inside this room over here. Now, while we are not revealed, I don't think these aliens, unless, you know, they were really attracted by the sound of our gunplay, I don't know if they actually would be coming for us, and I don't think they necessarily would. In any case, I'm going to continue to approach cautiously. I am on a timer here with the, uh, the six turns left, you can see here, for the network shutdown, um, and I was worried about that, so I was going to push forward yeah, some of these moves I'm going to push forward a little bit more aggressively than I'm comfortable with because I don't know how long it'll take to clear that room and shut down that network. However, as you'll see a little bit later in this video, turns out I just had my gremlin in there to shut things down um, ahead of time, so that's good. But I did get spotted right there by moving forward. And we had concealment, or not concealment, we had overwatch and we missed. I think I missed a very high percentage of my overwatch shots in this particular mission, if I recall correctly. Always a little frustrating, but you know, you're often not in a good uh, location to shoot anyway. So I'm just tabbing over here, trying to pick my target, and then I'm like, hey, why don't I shoot at this thing? Shoot the gas tank, get rid of the cover, deal a whole ton of damage. That was ex- I'm so happy that I spotted the shot against the gas container, because look at this. We did almost all of their hit points worth of health on the uh, the big giant battle mech dude. Oh, here you can see my charge attack and the, the weapon. So I'm actually going to do- oh, I had him commit to him. I think that's still what I'm going to end up doing, but I think my idea is- hold on, I should probably make sure that the giant robot is dead before I put my uh, ranger in a position where he's not going to have cover. These giant robots also have armor that you can shred with things like frag grenades. So armor reduces some of the amount of incoming damage. So if you, uh, so particularly later on, foes with a lot of hit points and a lot of armor, you're most likely going to want to shred that armor first before you go and do the rest of the attacks. Otherwise, it might take too long. So there you go. Big. This is a double move followed by an attack. Oh, and it panned over to show me the uh, computer, so we didn't actually see the attack. I got close enough to trigger a little bit of a, almost like a semi-cutscene there. But I did, he only had three hit points. But I was able to indeed one-shot him and didn't miss. I mean, I suspect, clearly the melee attacks have a chance to miss, that the enemy missed me. But I suspect the melee attacks are generally going to be very, very accurate because you're at so close of a range. And I think they also have a relatively high uh, damage dealing potential. In fact, what I'm really looking forward to... Because there's no way you can't upgrade your sword. There's Later on, there's going to be different kind of weapons, I'm sure. What are we going to get? Some sort of monofilament thing? Some sort of laser sword? I don't know, but I'm looking forward to that. It is, of course, a very risky to run your character forward into melee, but if you can consistently one-shot people, that's good. And here, this is when I was told, I was like, hey, you know you can hack these from a range. I'm like, really? I mean, it would not have been hard to reach this computer in just uh, five rounds, but still. So you can see here, I have a 100% guarantee to breach the network. But there's also a chance that I might get one of these two bonuses. One is slightly harder to get than the other. I think I, I end up going for the one that's slightly um, easier here. I don't know if we get it. I think... No, we fall just short this time around, but that's okay. We did still get the 100% guaranteed breach network, which of course was my mission here. And I think when we do this... So that mission no step number one was to do that, to hack the thing. Mission number two, or objective number two, is to neutralize all enemy targets. And in fact, that flare indicates that an enemy dropship is coming in to deliver more aliens. What's nice about that is you do get one round to respond. They don't just randomly drop on top of you. You can see where it's going to happen and incorporate that into your strategy. It feels like the combination of the concealment mode plus the fact that aliens don't, you know, always spot you 100% of the time plus the flare for the dropship removes a lot of the sort of random unexpected elements of the gameplay and introduces the chance to be slightly more strategic. Um, because you can act and respond. You don't just get surprised and dropped on. Doesn't mean you're not still going to get some surprises, but, you know, it should be surprises you can sort of plot to. Oh, there's a civilian running around, by the way, here. Not someone I'm supposed to be killing, 
but someone who can spot me and trigger the alarm for aliens through their shouts. Because again, general population is pro-alien in this thing. So, uh, I've got great cover over here, relatively good range. Let's see if we can take this guy out. And we don't. I mean, we, we, we saw, I believe, from the prediction that there was a good chance we weren't going to be able to kill him. Um, I do have a fair amount of hit points on this character, so I'm pretty confident that we can take one hit. Probably. What could possibly go wrong? But this was a little cavalier. Still, that's how I'm going to tend to play my rangers, I think. Run forward a lot and take some shots. So we do know we've got some vipers on the other side. Um, they're still pretty far away, though. We're going to see if... What spot am I choosing from? I think I'm trying to decide on what Confirm. angle I want to go to, because I can't really count on where they're going to come. I think I decide to stay a little further away here. Uh, do I take this shot? It's only 45%, but I think I might risk it to try... Oh, no, I go overwatch. To try to protect my character, um, my ranger here. And again, here, like... How, how far is the Viper? Ah, he's pretty far. He probably can't get a full uh, um, flank on me. Maybe he can, maybe he can't. Ah, what, let's risk it. What could possibly go wrong? And hey, we do have... This is my character that's got these slight exoskeleton arms that includes a rocket launcher. Looks like I'm not going to use it. Am I going to fire at the Advent Stun Launcher? I am. 51% of the time, this will work all the time. And I got him! Excellent, therefore, protecting my Ranger. Taking care of. Which is good. Oh, and there was a drop! So, um, again, you can see here that this is a new feature. When you kill people, occasionally they will drop an item. Now, of course, that's always happened in SCOM, but most of the time it just spontaneously explodes. And you just get weapon fragments, not weapon. Well, here, when they drop something like that, you have a timer before they self-destruct. You have three turns to get within the yellow area. If you get there, then you'll collect the item and deactivate the explosion. If you don't, then it explodes and you don't get it. I love it. Again, slightly less randomness, a little bit more strategy, and then you have to pick. Is it worth running in there? That's dangerous. Looks like the Viper here is going to take a shot at someone and miss. We've got really long range, so everything is fine there. No problemo. But they did drop a fair number of people, and in fact, some of them have different ranks. Uh, you can see by their hit points that there's a bit of a variation here. Uh, we've got a sniper, or a viper was 29%, that's no good. 59% on this advent trooper. Do I take it or go I overwatch? It looks like I'm going to take the shot over here. Looks like I might even be shooting through a wall. There we go, but I got him. Excellent job, sniperino. And then the sniper rifle is actually out of ammo at this point. Oh, one thing to worth noting, um, reloading a weapon, I don't believe ends your turn anymore. It still takes an action, but it used to be you sort of have to, like, move and reload if you wanted to make your move. But I think now it's, um, you can reload, then move. Uh, and potentially reload, then overwatch as well. And I'm pretty sure in XCOM, reloading just ended your turn. So I think that's an improvement. I think I like that quite a bit. We've got roof positions, but I can't get on the roof and fire. It's just a little too far, so... A little bit of hesitation here. I'm trying to decide the best way to deal with this because there's a fair number of troops over there. And really, my, my cover is not the greatest here. Single post, easy to be flanked. It's not great. Uh, I, th I think um, my own character, I think I might keep him where he is for now. We'll see. Oh, it's worth noting with all those time bits, uh, just like with previous versions of XCOM and some of those um, oh, the containers that give you the points that you could use to mutate, mutate your people. I don't remember what the resource was called. But if you finish the, the mission before the countdown expires, you do collect all the loot automatically. So you don't literally have to get in a square. Uh, are we looking to grenade? Oh, we are, because these guys have a lot of cover right now, and I can't really shoot them. It's a little tricky. It's right at the very edge of my grenade range. It looks like if I do this... Oh, here's word. You can, you'll see me hesitate a little bit. I have to ask the, uh, the developers. It's like, okay, right, that's the terminal I'm supposed to hack. I've already hacked it. If I blow it up, does a bad thing happen? And the developers are like, no, I think you're okay. But I think I, one of them came over and quick saved to me. Like, just in case we're lying to you, we're going to do it. But I'm, we're pretty sure if you've already hacked a thing, you can blow it up and it's okay. So I think what's going to happen here, I'll cancel one more time, and then you won't see it. Um, they're, they're hit, I think, the F5 key. And then I think I like go out and like, okay, let's hit it again just to make sure. And they're like, no, we're pretty sure it's okay. You've already hacked it. You're done. But there we go. So that was the quick save period over there. And then I'm going to grenade right there. Destroy their cover, but also hopefully do a little bit of damage. And kaboom! Yeah, there we go. Half their health is gone. And if they had armor, it would have been shredded as well. But it eliminates some of the cover. And hopefully that will help out. This is a little bit sketchy and scary. Again, I could easily get flanked by the, to the right. But I'm hoping that from here I can eliminate someone. Not quite on the Viper, but we'll do okay. Oh, just going to Overwatch. Well, that's fine, too. Now, that seems decent. Right over here. 
Oh, there is another uh, scanner tower, but we'll be out of range, and that's going to be okay. Looks like from there, I will be far enough away. I don't have to worry about anyone really being able to flank me that well. And in particular, can I get a great shot? Ooh, only 32%. 72% is not bad, though. I may have wanted to overwatch uh, in case the uh, the Viper were to move. But 72% is a good chance. We'll take someone out. Always like that. And again, I am fine. Look at the position. I've got, I should have good cover. I should basically be unflankable from this Viper. Everything should be perfectly awesome. Oh, and I do have some Overwatch coverage as well. Uh, that is going to miss. We didn't fire at that point because it was like 32% or something like that. It's not going to be much better on that Overwatch. Okay, so it comes around there. That was a pretty fast move, but I still have full cover. Excellent. And what the hell is that? So every now and again, stuff happens that you weren't expecting. I was not expecting, this actually isn't even the, first, the person in full cover, that was the person that was in front of the table, very far away, but apparently within tongue grab range, which did seven damage, seven damage from that range, and that was my rookie, I only had seven hit points, but even if I he grabbed the person with eight hit points, um, I still would have been enveloped, I would have been at one hit point and enveloped, so here I'm just like, sort of freaking out and talking to the devs, I'm like, what the hell was that? You know, now, knowing what the Vipers can do, you position yourself differently. Oh, this is another, like, really long move, followed by a melee attack. Um, but again, it's those, oh, followed by a disoriented, a disorient, because that's really bad, because of the, uh, I guess, the electricity going on there. Um, the, uh, the melee people can really do that double move charge against you. And so some of the assumptions that I had about what location would be safe were certainly off. So I can't slash, um, which is an interesting ability. You can hit a lot of people simultaneously. And here I've got a big a disoriented penalty, but I have a 91% chance of shotgunning from that point blank range. So we do that, and that gets rid of disoriented as well, which is great. But that was a very scary location for a little bit. But turns out shotgunning people right in the face is pretty effective. So here we're going to reload, and I think it'll demonstrate the fact that, yeah, reload. Oh, no, I, no I'm st I still don't know it, so I'm going to move first, then reload. But I could have reloaded and then moved. On the other hand, if I move, maybe I can pistol someone as well. I don't think I'll be in range, though. No, oh, there we go. I did reload and then move. There we are. I don't think I'm lying to you. I don't think I think reloading ended moves previously, didn't it? I think it was one of those things that always annoyed me. I might be thinking of something else. I'm not sure. Also, a lot of things that I used to remember would take like two actions, um, now only take one. Like firing the uh, the missile backpack. I'm pretty sure a lot of those things you couldn't move and then use those abilities, but now you can, which is pretty handy. And here I'm like, okay, this guy here, I'm not messing around with you. I want to detonate you. Again, get rid of the cover. Shred any um, armor that you might have. Oh, and I would have had to reload my gun, too, my minigun. So it avoids that. And then this guy here, maybe we can finish off the coverless guy. 75% chance. I could potentially scooch up. But there's not, I don't think there was a place I could scooch up and still be in cover. So I was like, no, I'm going to stay back here, take the shot, kill him, get some vengeance. Thank you very much for our poor recruit who died. And that neutralized all of the units at that point and and wrap that up so we're going to wrap up the mission we did lose one soldier and we do have a wounded soldier um which is too bad it says successful shot percentage 100 percent now clearly that doesn't factor in overwatch that i'm i'm assuming if you were to look back that all non overwatch shots hit but clearly we missed some on overwatch but it doesn't show that i do like this little record screen though it's pretty nice I'm the one who, who did the most damage, hooray, and was most under fire, and moved the furthest, which shouldn't be a surprise, and by I, I mean Corporal Inquile Marquez, and there we go, this is the end of the Guerrilla Ops mission, I think, I'm not sure, there might, there, well, there's a little bit left of this video, so clearly I show something else, um, one of the things for the next mission, I'm actually going to be reverting to the autosave right before I went on this one, and the reason for it is, um, because of the save that we've loaded here, I don't have enough supplies to hire someone else, I do have one extra rookie, which should mean I should be able to run a five person mission, which is my limit right now in the next one, however, uh, Inquile here, my character is injured, and he needs, I don't know, like three days of rest or something, which isn't much, but the, this, preview demo that was assembled for us um i couldn't I, I wasn't able to fast forward in time because it would have sort of messed things up so you know i couldn't just wait for three days for uh, marquez to be healed so the next mission um any upgrades that might happen here any promotions that might have occurred i actually won't get to take advantage of because we're going to be going slightly backwards in time that way i'll still have the intact uh, corporal marquez and i think i still replace uh rookie gordon i don't go with rookie gordon i assume that gordon is dead i replace it with the other uh rookie there but you know, successful mission, could have been better. That tongue grab, I, I remember just like 
there was an exclamation made in the room. I was quite surprised by that tongue grab. Um, I did uh, move Marquez a little far forward. Not really, he did fine. It was just, you know, the super speedy double move just caught me a little bit off guard. Everything else was pretty good. I'm sure I could have done it better with, you know, hindsight. But overall, I was okay. But that, that tongue grab, what the hell, man? What the hell? So we recovered some bits. Some of the things are familiar from last time. Various alloys and weapons and things like that. I believe... Must, I think I recovered that that weapon. Or it wasn't a weapon, it was a module, wasn't it? It was like another, um, like, you know, increased ammo capacity or, or a weapon stock or one of those. You'll probably have to rewind to see exactly what it was. But I did recover whatever that thing was in the yellow box because we finished the mission in time. There we go, we're getting some notices. We've delayed the advent alloy padding of, uh, event, which is good. That's a little bit longer without the our enemies having more armor or more hit points. And yet, yeah, force under strength. HQ yes, I know, recruits. but I only have one supply point, so no good there. And we've rescued new staff, new engineering staff, that unlocked some new things. But there we go. Uh, this video is going to get wrapped up. There's going to be another one immediately after this where we do the Black Sight. Now, what's worth noting is the Black Sight mission, we were told over and over and over again, is exceptionally difficult. A lot of people fully wiped on the Black Sight mission. So if you want to see something that is just, it is bigger, it is a longer mission with more to do, more threats, including some threats that we didn't really see in this particular video. Stay tuned for that one. If you're new to the channel, hey, make sure to subscribe and do all those things and tell other people about it. I'd like to cover strategy games a lot and simulation games. And I will almost certainly be Let's Playing XCOM 2 when it comes out. Really looking forward to that. I can't click the research button. I'm not allowed to click the research button. Don't do it, Quill. There we go. Stay tuned. Next video should be up very shortly after this one. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.